Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about arrays. Now what if you were assigned a job like uh, creative variable for every country that's out there? Mm, man there's like what 220, 230 countries out there? You don't want to make variables for all of them do you? Oh my goodness I know I wouldn't. So can't we just create one variable and somehow put all that information in there? Well, we can, and that's where arrays come into play, and they can make things so sweet. Let me realign these. There we go. Okay, so let's go in. I don't know. Let's go into our ad click, our little ad click event. So we're not going to really be using this other stuff till later in the tutorial. And let's figure out how to create an array. So the format for an array. So and so there's two different uh, ways of declaring and initializing array and that's dependent on whether or not you know the information that you're going to be giving it. So let's say here we already know so we have a set number of countries. So in order to declare that array type out the data type first that you'll be giving it uh, followed by some brackets then the name of the array is equal to then some curly braces and a semicolon. So let's figure out how to create ours. So first type out string because we're dealing with names of countries so there'll be strings followed by these brackets. Now what these brackets do is it tells your computer or it tells the compiler that there's going to be multiple of this specific data type stored in memory. So that's that's all it does. And we're going to be calling this countries. Something simple is equal to then our curly braces. So uh, if you're dealing with numbers like integers or doubles, you would just you know throw them in there like that. But we're dealing with strings, so let's just go for th for a few. You know, we can go United States. We could go through, I don't know, Norway. Let's go to Japan. And what's another great place to probably to go to? Probably Canada. I'd want to go to Canada. I've never been to Canada. Okay, so there we go. A bunch of places I'd probably want to visit, except for here, because I'm already here. But Okay, so let's figure out how to access these. So we know exactly what we put in there into our array, but let's figure out how to access it. So let's just create a simple message box that pops up when you click the Add button. So in order to access them, first of all, let's type out our message box first. And as we know, the first piece of information that we put in here is a string. But these are already strings, so we don't have to worry about that. So in order to access them, type out the name of the array. So that will be countries, followed by our uh, brackets. Now inside these brackets goes the index number. And index numbers almost always start at zero. The only time I know that they don't is in Visual Basic with collections. I remember that. Oh my goodness, I had to redo the recording because I was bamboozled by that. Uh, but here, so United States will be element, or excuse me, index number zero. Then Norway will be one, two, and Canada will be three. So the easiest to rate, way to remember what the highest subscript is, or the highest index number, is to take the number of elements, that's four, then subtract one. So Canada's three. It's three, two, one, zero. So let's access the United States. So that's zero. Let's save, and let's click our Add button. And we get the United States. That's cool. Let's throw in our three, just to make sure Canada there works. And Canada works, as always. Always tr trust them. They're, they're very, very... I think they're like number two for friendliest country. I think uh, Germany was ranked number one on some sort of thing I saw on Yahoo News many months ago, but I believe it. Okay, so now that we've learned how to create arrays in which we already know the values, most of the time we're dealing with arrays, you're going to have to allow the user to mess with that information. So let's figure out how to create an array that... Th so this example will be a bit complicated, but uh, let's say we're dealing with students' names. So every time we have a student, we throw in a new name, or let's go with scores. Let's go with scores instead. Let's use ints. But anyways, let's figure out the format first. So first, we're throwing the data type and our braces followed by name of array is equal to then we're going to use the new keyword we've done that before followed by the data type once again but this time we're going to have to throw in 
the number. So we're still going to know the number of elements that will be in there, but the values won't be set. So let's say, I want this to be an easy example. So let's, let's say there were 30 students, but 25 dropped, so we only have 5 left. Uh, that usually happens in a lot of college classes because, well, a lot of teachers are, you know, not so good, but I shouldn't be complaining. Okay, so let's uh, create our array here. So we'll go int scores and set that equal to new int. And we only have five students, so we're throwing a five. Now let's actually figure out how to fetch that information and at the same time throw it into this, uh, or the information from the text box, then throw it into our list box. So this is going to be quite complicated. So we're going to go int new score. Because we already know how to do this, so I'm going to be a little quick. So convert dot to int. So then we're going to go text input. So we convert that into an integer. And since we only have five students, we're going to have to create another variable. So since we only have five elements, we have to make sure that they don't keep clicking add and then it goes over the limit. So we're going to have to create a static variable, which we've done before int i is equal to zero and okay so we only can go up to four so if let's say i is less than or equal to four or you can just go less than five works the same way else we'll throw in a message box dot show and we'll have it say all students that's that right okay have been entered there we go so to make sure that we don't go get an error by having too many okay so while i is less than or equal to four and it's static so we'll keep updating every click time we click the button we'll take in whatever the new score is we're gonna have an i plus plus increment whoops here and okay so now let's add the element to our array so first, type out the name of the array, so that's scores. And in order to get to that specific index number, just put i in there. We could just put 0, 1, 2, uh, or 3, or 4, but let's just throw i in there, since it'll be incrementing up by 1 every time. Set that equal to whatever score they got, so new score. So there we go. Now scores at that certain index number will be equal to that new score. Then we'll also have to add it to our uh, list box so what I call it list students okay so we'll go list students dot items dot add and we're gonna want to add the scores at I there you go so that's gonna be really 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 cool so we click save and let's try this out as it is so I throw in 320 oh whoops uh, allow me to stop debugging and let's actually change that into text there we go that actually scared me minor minor error minor error so let's go 320 add that there we go let's go 600 something like that let's say someone got a 50 then a 25 let's say someone got a 15 wow they're just getting lower and lower and someone got a hundred wait a minute all students have been entered so we can't keep going so now let's that, that's about all I really want to show you the arrays you could stop now if you want all I'm gonna do from uh, now is show you how to access that array number from your list box by clicking the access button so uh, let's have a message box appear I didn't plan this out. A lot of this stuff, I, I, I don't, I'm actually doing this, this one without notes at all. Uh, so hopefully I can do this all right. So we're going to want to access that score number. So in order to access the score number, what we're going to do is type out scores. Then in order to get that index number that we want, we're going to have to get the selected index from whatever is highlighted on the list box. So we'll type list students dot selected index and I believe that should work out and it should be dot to string 
because it's numbers we're doing. Because we're doing with numbers, so we have to throw the two string in there. And let's throw out score right there. Ooh, I hope I did this right. I'm gonna be really, really excited if I actually did this on the top of my head. Okay, so let's go 320 first. Add that. 500. Add. Let's say these are SAT scores. Someone got an 800 on something. That'd be pretty cool. 400, and let's say someone else got a 500. And if we try it again, we got an error, and nothing was added to our list box. So we go 800 and click access, and it says 800. And 400. Oh, this is so cool. You know what's really cool about making tutorial videos? Is that actually helps me, too. They, they help you. Hopefully they do. I really hope these do help you. But they help me, too, to remember things that... C sharp actually I'm actually learning this one on my own. I I did not take a class on C sharp, so a lot of these I actually didn't take classes on. But uh but yeah. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. I'm so excited I did this. So I'll go back up here so you can see the formats and I'll see you next time.